Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this tutorial, we're going to explore how to bridge the gap between Flutter and native code using platform channels. So Flutter is great for building apps that work across different platforms, but sometimes we need access to native features like the sensors, the cameras, the battery info, and many more. That's where method channels comes in handy, which allow Flutter and native code to talk to each other so that you can unlock all these features. Yeah, so over here, I'm going to use Flutter documentation as a guide to write our custom specific code. All right, you can see Flutter uses a flexible system that allows you to call platform specific APIs in a language that works directly with those APIs. You can see Kotlin or Java on the Android, Swift or Objective C on the iOS, C on Windows. Since Flutter extends on building for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux as well, you can also write the Objective C on the Mac OS and C on the Linux, right? So in our case, we are going to work with iOS and Android, which we are going to write our custom Kotlin and also Swift. And this is the architectural pattern or the architectural overview with these platform channels. So messages are passed between client's UI and the host platform using platform channels as illustrated in the diagram. So our host in here is the iOS and also the Android that communicates with the clients, which in, in our case is our Flutter app through the method channel. So it's basically four steps we are going to follow in here. The first step is to create a new Flutter project. And the next step is to create our Flutter platform clients. The third step is to add the implementation of the Android. We need to add the Android specific implementation. And finally, we need to add the iOS platform specific implementation. So let's get right into that. So in this tutorial, uh, example is to work on getting the battery level on a specific device, right? So let's get right into that. So over here, first, we need to create a new app project, right? So I already have my Flutter app project created. That contains my homepage with a scaffold, right? The next step is to create a Flutter platform client. And to do that, first of all, we need to construct a channel. I need to make use of the method channel with a single platform method that retains the battery level. So you can see they make use of the method channel and assign it to the platform variable over here. And the next step is to get a battery level. Right. So initially, they've assigned an unknown battery level to a variable known as the battery level. Right. So let's do that. First, we need to assign the method channel to a variable known as the platform. So below over here, we can paste that in here. We need to import the services. Service dot that. For that, that service dot that. You can see we have that import over there. So the next step is to get the battery level, right? So you need to create a variable that will get the battery level. So initially, you're going to assign that variable an unknown battery level state since we don't have that yet. And the next step is to add the functionality to get a battery level, right? So we need to add our functionality in getting a battery, battery level. So I'll copy that. And below over here, I'll paste in. So this functionality gets us the battery level by making use of the platform and use the invoke method, passing in the method to get the battery level, right? So once we get the results, we can assign it to the battery level variable. If you have any error on the platform, we can throw that specific error. And finally, we can make use of the system to update our battery level by assigning it the results of the battery level in here. So finally, we need to replace the build method from the template to contain a small user interface that displays the battery states in a string and a button, right? So the build method is going to contain a center and this center is going to have a column with a button and also a test, right? So the button, the impress of the button will get this We'll call a function to get us the battery level and the test will be displaying the battery level, right? So over here, we need to get rid of the const, yeah, and save any changes. So once we have this functionality, we are done with step two, right? To create a Flutter platform client. And the third step is to add the Android platform specific implementation, right? So they have two implementation. Either you go with 
Kotlin or Java, right? So I'll be going in with Kotlin over here. So first we need to start our Android Studio. So we need to start by opening Android Studio in a different portion. So we need to select the menu item file, open and navigate to the Flutter app we just created. So I'll do that over here. I'll open. So within that same battery level, I need to choose the Android and open the Android in a different window. There we go. So this project contains a Android directory. So let's proceed with the documentation. So we need to navigate to the directory. We've done that and click OK. And we need to open the main activity located located in the Kotlin folder in the project overview. So inside the configure Flutter engine. So let's do that by opening the main activity. So within the Android app source main, you can see the Kotlin. So in the Kotlin, you can see the main activity right so for now this what we have so far the main activity extending the flutter activity right so we need to add this override functionality and for that i will grab this let me first of all make import of the ones above right so let's import this So once you have this import, I can just grab this main activity, flutter activity over here and replace that with the existing one. So this start by creating a variable channel that corresponds to what we've already created in the client side, right? With a function that configure flutter engine over here. So the next step is to add the Android Kotlin code that uses Android battery API to retrieve the battery level. And this code is exactly the same as you write in your native Android app. So first, we need to add the needed import at the top of the file. So I'll grab this import and over here I will import. And next, we need to add the following method in the main activity below to conf below the configure Flutter engine, right? So I'll copy that, and you can see we have the configure Flutter engine over here. Below that, we need to paste in the functionality and getting the battery level, right? So below over here, I can just paste in the functionality that will get us the battery level. So this is a native Android, right? A native Android developer will do in Kotlin. So once we have that, let's proceed. Finally, you can complete the set method handler method added earlier, right? So you need to handle a single platform method, get battery level. So test for that in the core argument, the implementation of the platform core methods in the Android code written in the previous steps. So we need to remove the following code. So we need to replace the existing code with this, right? By making use of the core method and check if that's equal to the battery level, then we can call the function that will get its battery level and assign it to a variable of battery level. Right, so I'll just grab that over here and where the to do is I'll just replace it. All right, so we check for the core method if that's equal to the get battery level. We call our get battery level function and assign it to the battery level. Right, we check the battery level if that's not equal to negative one. That's why we get our results to be a state and pass in the value, else we are going to throw the error with result.error. And passing a message so over here i think we have two imports so i'll get rid of this yeah and we are good to go yeah i think that should be it you should not be able to run your app on the android if you're using android later you can set the battery level the extended control panels accessible from the button tuba right so before we do that, let's proceed to just add another functionality. Let's add functionality to the iOS as well, right? So before we do that, let's add the iOS platform specific implementation. Then we finally test all of them. So the last step, let's move on to add the iOS platform specific implementation. So we do that by opening the S code and 
modify the app delegate or switch file. Alternatively, you can also open it right within the editor, right? So within the app delegate or switch file. So the functionality actually starts from where we start over here. So I'll just grab this functionality and below over here, I can just paste that functionality. So we need to create a method to invoke the UI thread and also handle the battery messages, right? So and that's found below over here, right? So next we need to add iOS suite code that uses the iOS battery APIs to retrieve the battery level, right? So I'll copy that over here and below, below over here, you can just paste that function, right? And that receives the battery level. So once we have that function, the next step is to update the set method call handler, right? Where we invoke the UI thread to get the battery level, right? So I will copy that. So we, we need to add a functionality in here. Let's in, grab this. Red zero coming from. So let me just start by grabbing the functionality from the battery channel, right? So I need to copy all and replace where we are setting method co handler on the battery channel. So there we go. Yeah. So we need to get rid of this um, parenthesis. Yeah, and that should be it, right? So we need to save any changes and proceed. So you should be able to run the app on the iOS if the simulator, if you using simulator, know that it doesn't support battery APIs and the app displays battery not it's not available, right? So we can't test on the simulator. So that should be it. Let's proceed to check the functionality on the Android. There we go. You can see our uh, battery level initially is set to be unknown battery level right so once we click on the button to get a battery level you can see the battery level is at 100 percent so i open the panel over here and adjust the level and get the battery level you can see it changes to 79 percent so it actually doesn't work on simulator right so if you have any physical um ios device you can just test on it and, and that should be it see you on this tutorial until then stay tuned